I'm going to attempt to be educational and entertaining. Let's see how this goes. What's going on everybody? My name is Brian, you're watching Angling Anarchy, and on today's video we're going to be looking at some old footage. Uh, this has been a little bit of a series. It's some old footage from 2014, uh, a trip with my dad to Eagle Lake in Ontario. Uh, just a fantastic trip. We boated 20 fish between the two of us in uh, four full days and two half days of fishing. So five days, 20 fish. It was really good fishing. It was all a bucktail bite. Phenomenal stuff. Uh, great for somebody that was just starting out filming because I got to capture a lot of these things on film But there are a lot of mistakes that were made along the way that I learned from and I am going to along with watching the footage We'll talk with some of the things that I learned and improved after this trip I think the best thing to do is go by fish by fish. This was a five fish day. I caught three, my dad caught two. He got his first figure eight fish. He got his biggest muskie, a 42 incher. So a lot of cool things going on, but let's go through one by one and we'll watch catching the fish, which is the fun part. And I'll talk about what I have since improved on and what you can do to improve your filming if you're going to attempt any of this. Fish number one was a 45 inch fish that I caught on a figure eight. Most of the fish we caught on this trip were figure eight fish. Uh, Eagle Lake is notorious for this. So you, you had to be on your game when the fish came to the boat. But the problem with this piece of footage, it's, it's really cool. It, it catches the action of me setting the hook. It's uh, a camera that I have up on a pole, so it catches the entire bow of the boat. I had one on the bow and the stern, and then I had one camera on the gunnel. So the problem here is it was such a windy day that the only noise that you can really hear very well out of the top camera is the wind just blasting through it. Now, if I would have had the, now this is the mistake I made, the gunnel camera, which sits quite a bit lower, it's right on the gunnel of the boat, still would have had some noise to it, but it would have been lessened and it would pick up uh, our voices a little bit better because it was closer and we are speaking sort of towards it instead of away from it. So a lot of times if you're not wearing a, a, like a chest camera or a microphone right here, you can use that footage from down on the gunnel uh, as your main audio footage because it's usually a little bit clearer and less windy, uh, for lack of a better term, than any cameras that are up higher. So I'm gonna make some jump cuts through this. I won't make you watch the entire thing because quite honestly, really good footage with really crappy audio is no good at all. If I wasn't talking about this in a tutorial sense, I probably wouldn't really even use this without uh, dropping the real foot or the audio out of it and adding some music or something like that. But yeah, you'll, you'll get the idea when you watch this. So as you can see in here, uh, it's a cool strike, it's a cool fight. I had forgotten to turn that gunnel camera on, so that would have added another uh, sort of uh, dynamic to the video. I could have cut between the two, but 
Quite honestly, I, I was new to filming. I had the camera set up, but I was just too lazy to get it started for whatever reason. I can't remember back that far why, but I am just stuck with this one piece of footage, which again, to watch it is fun, to listen to it, not so fun. So that's the first one. The second fish is a 42 inch muskie that my dad caught and it's his biggest muskie, his personal best to date. So uh, it's a really special fish. But the problem is I was filming in a five minute loop. Now, that isn't a problem really for me now because that's what I use all the time. I really enjoy using the five minute loop. It saves the film in one minute chunks. So editing is quite a bit easier when I'm dealing with it. So I, I do enjoy using the five minute loop. The problem with a five minute loop is if you are not on top of it and once you are done taking care of the fish, if you're not keeping track of time, you start to lose the footage because what happens when you loop is it's constantly saving a minute worth of footage and as it saves the next minute, it gets rid of the oldest minute. So once you stop and press the button, it saves from that point back. So if you wait too long, when you hit stop, it may not go back far enough to catch the action. You could go to a 20 minute loop. That's the next smallest loop that GoPro has. And then it saves your film in four minute chunks. But I have found that out of hundreds of muskies I've caught on film, there's only been two times where I missed the actual hit, uh, the initial hit of the fish. And that was in 2014 when I first started filming. What I do now is when the fish hits the net, I look at the time either on my phone or the locator and I give myself four minutes to get that fish taken care of. You know, if we have to cut hooks, if we have to do something, I'll stop everything, restart it, and that way we know we're not going to lose anything. So after all that, this is unfortunately the only thing we captured of Dad's 42-incher. So again, it's noisy because of the wind noise and you know, I didn't stop the camera soon enough so all we got was the fishes in the net and uh, you know, still have a cool picture of it and everything but uh, it really would have been cool to have that entire fight on film. So if you're going to start filming, uh, maybe hedge your bets, do the 20 minute. I don't like doing that because it takes up four times as much space on your card as a five minute loop. Uh, and the five minute loop I find easier to edit the little one minute clips that it saves it as. So uh, that's lesson number two on fish number two. Fish number three, again, really cool. It, it was dad's first figure eight fish. He did a really good job of getting that fish to hit. It hits out initially and then he gets it to the boat and gets it to hit boat side. And you'll notice that as soon as the fish hits the bag, the bait pops out. So uh, timed that really good. And we were able to get that fish in for him. It was a nice upper 30 inch fish. Now, the problem with this piece of footage is we still have a lot of wind noise. Even though we're out of the wind a little bit, you can still pick it up on that, that top pole camera uh, that I have. It just, it is, it's sitting, you know, six feet above the boat. So it's catching all the wind that's going past. The problem here is lack of cameras, I guess, which for me now, uh, that's not a problem. I've got cameras all over the boat. But back then when I first started, I just had the two cameras on the pole and one on the gunnel pointed up towards me. It would have been nice to have one pointing back again, being able to cut back and forth between the gunnel shot and the uh, up top shot uh, gives the video a little bit more of a dynamic feel to it. But what can you do when you're starting out? You have to deal with what you're given with the amount of cameras you can afford at the time. So uh, that's the only thing I would change is add a camera to this little piece of footage and give it a better feel by being able to cut back and forth between two different points of view with the different cameras. Ha, 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 ha.
timing on that one was just right. <laughs> Fish number four is a nice 42 and a half incher. It's later in the day, so the wind has died down. We don't get as much wind noise. I, for a little while, anyway, you'll see that I have both cameras running, and let's take a look at it. So what you'll notice with this, I capture the hit on the up top camera and the gunnel camera. We get two really cool shots. I can cut back and forth. The problem is, as you'll, you'll hear and see as I'm taking the fish out of the bag, is the camera just inexplicably shuts off on me. The one on the gunnel. It doesn't happen all the time, but every now and again it's electronics. Sometimes it fails and shuts off. You just turn it back on and keep going. But uh, luckily it didn't shut off before that or right in the middle of fighting the fish. But unfortunately, uh, you might notice an audio change because I'll use the audio from the camera on the gunnel and once it shuts off, I have to switch to the audio from the camera up top. Now, the wind isn't as bad, so the, no the wind noise created isn't as bad, but still, it would have been nice to have that cleaner audio from the gunnel. The last fish is minutes after the 42 and a half. It's a 43 and the audio is pretty decent, but after that camera shut off on the gunnel, I was, for whatever reason, either forgot, I probably forgot to turn it back on. So uh, I have no, <laughs> no footage from the gunnel, just the footage from up top. So uh, always be aware of uh, the cameras. Uh, make sure they're running if you're filming. Uh, give them a look every now and again. There should be a red flashing light on a GoPro. Uh, most cameras have something like that to let you know that they are working. Those are 
five different fish and five different lessons to be learned when you're attempting to start filming. Uh, so I hoped that helps. Now, if you are thinking about getting into filming, there is a cool product out there. I honestly haven't used it, but I have one here. I've talked about it before. And when I started filming, these weren't really readily available. So I built my own apparatus to set up cameras in my boat. But these uh, YOLO Tech power sticks, see if it'll focus on that instead of my face. There it is. Uh, these are a cool product because they just go in to the existing port that you have on either your bow or your stern for the, the lights. Uh, that's where it gets its power from. There's two USB ports up here that you can plug in, put your GoPro up here, put, you can actually run two GoPros up here. This one, uh, it actually comes with all the attachments to either put it in like a compression fitting. This one is the most secure. It screws in and out of here. This is the one they recommend if you're going to leave the camera up when you're running from spot to spot. Uh, this gives it the threads on there, give it a little bit more stability, but this seems very sturdy. I'm looking forward to using this as sort of an auxiliary camera this year. Uh, when I hop into other people's boats, this is an easy way to travel with another camera. So check out these power sticks. I'll have a link in the description below where you can click on it and check out all the products uh, from Yellow Tech. So from those humble beginnings in 2014 where I started out with uh, three Hero 3 black GoPros, uh, I've over the years accumulated quite a few. I probably up to 10 or so GoPros now. Uh, some of my favorites to use are the Hero 7 Blacks. I find those to be a nice camera. You can film at a nice high frame rate uh, at the gunnel so your uh, slow motion can be nice and smooth if you want to do something like that. But I want to get into uh, chest cams versus head cams and why I wear a chest cam. Now, when I first started watching fishing videos on YouTube, a lot of them were fil filmed with chest cams. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why some of these videos had thousands, hundreds of thousands of views when all you could see was the person's hands and the, the rod and the reel and not much else was going on. I later found out by listening to some of these bigger YouTubers that the reason they were using these is more for the audio than for the visual part of it. Like I said before, a fantastic video with crummy audio, it's hard to watch. I can stand watching something that it has questionable video, but really good audio. So that's the reason for these things. And since I'm filming with multiple other cameras, if my hands get in the way, I can easily cut to one of the other cameras and use that footage, but I'm almost always using the audio. The audio from most of my videos, other than the nice one that I'm using on my Canon camera, um, most of the audio is right off of a Hero 4 Silver GoPro. Uh, if you can see here, I've got the little piece of dead cat. This, is, this just deadens the wind. So all of those pieces of footage that we watched previously uh, would have been helped if I would have had some sort of windscreen over the microphone. Uh, it really deadens the wind sound. The other thing I like about a chest cam versus a head cam is when you are fishing and it's windy, nine times out of 10, at least in my boat anyway, my back is to the wind, so this is being protected by my body. If you have a camera up here, that wind still has a chance to catch it and give you a bunch of wind noise. Now, I'll admit, some of the footage you can get from a head cam can be quite good because you have a higher perspective, your hands aren't in the way, but for the most part, when I use this on my chest, I see a lot of people, if you can see that, that have them, let me check, that have them pointed down like this. That is a problem, especially musky fishing, because as soon as you bend down to do a figure eight, all you're doing is looking at your feet. I tend to run with mine parallel to my body. It keeps it from looking right at your hands. A lot of times the hand or the rod is in the bottom of the frame, so you don't get that obstructed view. And then when I bend over to do a figure eight, it typically is looking right at the water, right at what I would be seeing, and it works out actually pretty good. So uh, before you knock the chest cam, you have to look at the advantages it gives you with audio because that can make all the difference in making a good video. And if you have any questions about cameras or filming or that sort of thing, feel free to hit me up on the Angling Anarchy Facebook page or in the comments below. More than happy to help you out and answer any questions you might have. That brings this video to an end for this week. 
hopefully we will be down muskie fishing somewhere south of uh, Wisconsin here in the very near f future. So uh, look for those videos. Uh, and if you don't see them, it means we didn't catch anything. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to be positive. Uh, hopefully we'll get a couple fish in the boat. And with that, that brings this video to an end. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you on the next video.